It's been well over a month now, and players have had the time to digest whatever content there is to offer in the latest expansion of Guild Wars 2, Secrets of the Obscure. I mean, at least what has been released of it. Be warned, this video includes major spoilers to the story of Secrets of the Obscure, so if you haven't done it yet, now's the time to skip to the weapon training part, check the chapters in the description. You've been warned, now let's proceed. Now, this expansion came out in August 22 of this year, but the catch is, we did not get everything that is planned for it. And this is because the whole expansion is split into three updates, and each one is three months apart. So, what does this mean for the future of Guild Wars 2? Is Secrets of the Obscure a win? And is it a step towards the right direction for the game moving forward? To answer all these questions, we need to start with the story. Now, the story ends the dragon cycle and it changes the complete pacing of how ArenaNet has been doing stories for almost a decade now. Instead of fighting new dragons who seem to always be pissed, we confront a new threat which is called the Cryptus. This feels like a fresh start to the game and it gives it some kind of a new vibe if you want to say. We got to see Zorja return which is very nice. And we also got to meet the dwarves and travel to new places. We also got to confront a new demon called Ceres in a very short interaction that felt impossible but was actually by design. And when it actually comes to this guy, I have to say I'm a bit disappointed. I mean, building all this hype around him deserves a better ending to his story than this. Fighting him during the last chapter and allegedly killing him does not do a demon like this any justice. When I first came across this character, I expected that we would be fighting him in an epic battle later down the line, but no, he gets offed after a couple of hours of playing the story. I mean, remember Mordremoth and all the hype that was built around him even before the expansion was launched? We had to cross through four maps before we can actually confront him, and his story fight, regardless of how epic, challenging, and badass and enjoyable it was, it was separate and completely different from the meta fight in Dragon Stand, which had us also fight Mordremoth in some sort. For Ceres, not only does he die in the story, but we also get to fight him in the exact same way with a few different mechanics in the Temple of Phoebe, which is the new strike mission in Secrets of the Obscure. Anyway, enough of me bitching, and let me say that apart from all the issues and the clunkiness that we had at launch, the story was actually pretty good. It was a complete change of pace, and I actually enjoyed it a lot. I also think that for any lore enthusiast out there, the story alone is worth the price tag that the expansion is set at. Story is not everything though. We also got a bunch of new features, and the first one that we will cover is Weapon Master Training. This is what ArenaNet is calling it, and I think it is a way to cover the fact that they did not release any elite specialization for this expansion. Basically what Weapon Master does is that it allows you to carry any weapon that the class can carry, regardless of which elite specialization you have. For example, prior to the Weapon Master thing, only an Elementalist Catalyst could hold a hammer. But now with Weapon Master, even a Weaver or a Tempest can carry a hammer. This could be a topic of controversy because some people might say no, three elite specializations is enough, and others would disagree, but I personally believe that we have enough elite specs, and ArenaNet has to come up with new ways to make characters play differently moving forward. Weapon Master training could be the way, but I think there is no innovation here. Allowing us to reuse the same set of weapons that we could previously use is just a shortcut to quote unquote new content. Now, I also know that every class will gain access to a new weapon in the future updates of this expansion, but I don't know. Things didn't quite hit the mark like previous expansions did. Even though Weapon Master brought new playstyles, builds, and ways to enjoy your class, it is not really something new that we get to explore for our classes. It is only a different way for theory crafting and building on things that already exist. Now let's address the big elephant in the room, and this is the relics. What happened was ArenaNet removed this big buff that you would get from having six of the same rune type and relocated this buff to a new equipment slot called a relic. The sixth rune effect now only has a stat boost, and the big quote unquote build changing effect that you can get will be off of relics. Now this system on its own is a good one, and it could be a step in the right direction, but the relics themselves, oh, this is something that we have and they are utter garbage. The benefits you would get from most of them are completely useless, 
with the exception of a few of course things could still change in the future but as it is now relics are a no for me even though the system is quite nice i don't get the reasoning behind creating it also the rune system alone was pretty good and there's enough runes to turn theory crafters on so why include a new system at the end of the day we will get a legendary relic that allows players to sink in more time and gold into the game but where is the value in that if the relics themselves are not really worth it let me know what you guys think about the system leave it in the comments below okay enough of equipment and gear let's talk about the two maps that we got during launch my my general review on them would be that they are quite nice and they provide a completely new way to explore maps and they also provide an experience that we didn't get in guild wars 2 before the first map skywatch archipelago is basically a bunch of recycled textures on floating islands you have the chuck area which is a recycle from tangled depths you have the jade mech area which is a recycle from the new kylang city and you have ratanovis promenade which is a recycle of ratanovis now the story has an explanation to this but i believe it's a shortcut to easier map creation don't get me wrong the map is actually beautiful and the verticality that it has with all the different traversal methods like updrafts ley lines you get the point like i said they give a new experience to exploration anyway the second map which is amnitas is mostly a new set of tiles and also follows the same theme of using mounts to travel through different areas of the map there is really not much to say here i mean it's a map it's average nothing too fancy though but we will be seeing new maps in the future updates so we'll have to wait and see what is in store naturally in every new expansion we will be getting a new set of enemies that we can confront in heart of thorns we got the mordrum and the chalk and other jungle type enemies by the fire we got the forged and more variations of the branded in end of dragons we got the jade mechs the speakers and we even got to fight void enemies all those especially the mordrum jungle enemies and the forged had nice fighting mechanics tied to them we would have for example the pocket raptors where i'm sure most of us would shit their pants before trying to fight them the mordrum snipers who would down you almost instantly after standing on their annoying fire line and you have the forged who are really tough to beat probably some of the toughest enemies in the game i would say then comes the cryptus and secrets of the obscure this is my least favorite types of enemy and the idea behind them is nice the concept art that we saw prior to the expansion's release was also pretty decent however the execution i felt was pretty poor all their attacks consist of these big black pools that damage you by just standing on them they are a reskin of previous enemies that we have seen and their textures are just like a big black blob that has no personality don't get me wrong also some of them are pretty good especially the champions that you get to fight during rifts but compared to the older enemy models and mechanics the cryptus really don't hit the mark now the expansion is not just a story obviously you have the new rift hunting new legendary obsidian armor that can be obtained through open world a new way to obtain the sky scale new strike missions new fractals coming soon and the other things that i mentioned earlier in the video but are all those enough compared to what we used to get in previous expansions to me it seems very clear that arena Nut are trying to cut down on budget of expansions and they want to get as much revenue as they can with the yearly expansion releases when it comes to the quote unquote is it worth it part well yes but this depends the value that you would get at least for now before all the updates are out is much less compared to what we used to get in older expansions now older expansions again they used to be more expensive for example heart of thorns retailed at 49.99 us dollars on release but this is no longer the case so let's talk about today if we address the newer players you can get more value by paying for heart of thorns and path of fire which is just a few dollars more expensive but the content that you get out of both of those expansions weigh much more than what you would get from secrets of the obscure again at least for now but this won't change till after all the updates roll out and i will also be doing a complete review of that once the time comes but the thing is that this worries me a bit guild wars 2 has been out for more than a decade and it seems that arena net are decreasing their budget on the game this is what it looks like from a bird's eye view and the fact that we paid for a full expansion but will only get the updates of the said expansion after some time is also not a really nice approach 
As fans of the game, we will obviously be buying said expansions, but I don't like the direction of how this is going. The expansion on its own is worth it. I enjoyed it a lot, and I'm sure many players did too. And this is not a rant on the expansion, but rather the way the developers are looking at content deliveries moving forward. This is my opinion. What do you guys think? Is Guild Wars 2 going to follow the same path to all of its future expansions moving forward? Or is this just a bump in the road? Let me know down in the comments. I would like to hear what you guys think on this topic. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, peace.